everybody. So disregard my surroundings. Um, I'm actually going through a whole different thing right now, which you'll see in future videos. But this video is all about basically post-surgery for papillary thyroid cancer and also the whole iodine radiation process for the thyroid cancer. Uh, to know it's kind of long, and that's because I had the surgery in December and then didn't get iodine radiation until June. So that's over a six month period um, that I'm covering. And basically the thought was that, well, COVID, there, there was sort of a iodine shortage, um, radioactive iodine shortage. And I had pretty low uh, tumor marker levels. So the doctor didn't think it was super pertinent that I get the iodine radiation super you know, soon. And, and honestly, even for most people, you wait at least a few months after your surgery to get the iodine radiation. But um, bear with the length and uh, thanks for kind of following my journey. When my thyroid was removed, I started getting annoying nightmares, just a lot of anxiety. Too much synthetic hormone can cause insomnia and anxiety, so I figured they should go away in time. Uh, we did a test and my thyroid hormones are within range, just a time of like a lot of anxiety more than normal. For Valentine's Day, I went with my nieces to the movies and we all wore our onesies and so even though my surgery was a while ago and my numbers were looking normal i was still having a lot of trouble breathing so we did an echocardiogram to see why i have a hard time breathing and uh, we also did a pulmonary function test it almost looks like a time machine here and we did some scans of my lungs almost looks like a sort of spaceship thing here and we also did x-rays of my chest and you know it almost looks like a storage closet but all of these medical equipment items are um, just really kind of funky looking to me but so three hours in the morning for medical stuff and then eight hours of working as an engineer it was pretty hard to balance uh, working and all these doctor's appointments and things like that. One of the nice things about work is that I went on a work trip to Wisconsin once the doctor said I was allowed. Instead of flying to try to avoid COVID, I drove. So this was this long road trip from Pennsylvania to Wisconsin. I stopped in Chicago, had this really nice dinner. Uh, the nice thing about work trips is that, you know, your meals and your travel are all covered. While in Wisconsin, I explored some state parks and it was just a really nice trip. I also went to see the Apostle Island National Park park and went kayaking so really really nice scenery there and then right when I came back from my trip was when I needed to start the iodine radiation prep so to help get rid of my thyroid cancer I'm getting iodine radiation in a couple weeks the prep is supposed to be really the worst part it requires a strict low iodine diet which purposely withholds nutrition that uh, you would normally need and I need to stop all of my thyroid hormone which is also a hormone you typically need because it regulates metabolism, mood, and energy. And this is day number six of doing all of this out of about 21. Definitely hitting me hard. But again, the cats and the pets are always really nice. So hypothyroidism is pretty tough on the body. So I'm fatigued, increased sensitivity to cold, there's constipation, dry skin, voice hoarseness, muscle weakness, depression, impaired memory. I'm feeling all of this when it comes to this hypothyroidism. And so basically, you withhold your body from iodine so it's because your thyroid tissue is one of the only parts in your body that uptakes iodine so when they give you radioactive iodine it will find any thyroid tissue that you have and can destroy it but one of the ideas is that you take a small dose of the radioactive iodine and then do a scan to see if you need a larger dose because the scan will show if there's any targeted areas that the iodine travels to. Which really there shouldn't be any targeted areas because I had thyroid surgery to remove the cancer and all of the tissue. And to do the scan, so like I said, they give you a small dose of radioactive iodine and then they see where it goes in your body. But because it's such a small dose, the scan is really, really long. Two hours laying still for a scan. And what did I think about for two hours? Well, fear of the scan results, meditation, what to do when I'm done with the scan, food, money, investing, I counted some numbers, tried to relax, but two hours, staying still, awake, 
not it's just kind of tough so it didn't get the worst news but we did find some targeted areas that the uh, thyroid tissue is still there so we do need to do more radiation to get rid of it the interesting thing is the doctor actually wanted to give me a pretty large dose of radioactive iodine but I requested a smaller dose because one of the side effects of radioactive iodine is uh, bone marrow damage. And, you know, with everything last year, I definitely did not want to get bone marrow damage. And the doctor agreed. So he said, that's fine, given my history. Here's a photo of myself, like actually in a scan. And you can see that some of the radioactive iodine is in my saliva glands, which is normal. And some is in my thyroid bed, uh, which means like there was some still some tissue left from the surgery. And and I'm getting the larger dose to kill that tissue. Basically to get the radioactive iodine, talking with the doctors, we decided it was best if I get admitted into the hospital because once you get the radioactive iodine, you become basically radioactive where you can contaminate people. And given that I live with seven other people, um, we just thought that while I'm the most radioactive, it's the safest if I stay in the hospital. So currently radioactive, a couple times a day, the nuclear health department will measure how much radiation I'm admitting to my surroundings to determine when I can leave the hospital. It's really interesting actually. So one of the rules when you're radioactive is that everything you touch should be covered with plastic or paper so you don't contaminate the room and encourage this like deep deep cleaning. With plastic or paper you can just take off the plastic or paper and then dispose of it properly. So this is a photo of my room where they tried to cover everything. In the bathroom, you see even like the toilets covered in plastic, the floor is covered with this paper, uh, even the hand sanitizer and soap is covered with plastic. So they did really try to cover everything. Also, everything that you bring in has to be turned over to nuclear waste because you can contaminate it. So I brought in a bear and sweatpants just cause they're comfortable, but I'll have to give them up uh, when I leave. And even you can see the trays are paper because your saliva and your sweat or anything can really contaminate them and they want to be able to dispose of the trays. So to help prevent radiation from permanently destroying my saliva glands, every hour for 24 to 36 hours, I need to wake up and drink lemon juice. The lemon juice is supposed to pull saliva out of your saliva glands so the radioactive iodine doesn't sit there too long. The whole process is almost like cruel and unusual in punishment. You know, waking up once an hour to suck on something sour. It's, there's definitely been highs and lows, but I keep on telling myself it's to save my saliva glands. I, I survived the 36 hours of lemons once an hour. <laughs> if you saw that post from yesterday. <laughs> but, um probably haven't responded to most people um mostly just been sleeping <laughs> but uh alive surviving so thanks and you can see that when i was talking about they measure my radioactivity they have this measurement tool finally hit the below seven milligrams per hour at one meter. And that's kind of the cutoff for when you can go home. If you're extremely hypothyroid and just got radiation, don't tell yourself that you can drive 45 minutes home. That's what I ended up doing. And I was just wiped out and sick and it was just a really hard drive, but I did make it home safe. So to the road of recovery, step one, I'm allowed to eat normal food again. I'm off the low iodine diet, which is great. I'm not that hungry, but still being able to eat anything I want. It was amazing. That diet was really hard. Step two, my uh, digestive system works a lot slower because I'm hypothyroid. So to not harm my digestive system with radiation that can build up in your um, bowels, I've been put on medication to make my digestive system work and it makes my stomach hurt really bad. But finally they took me off that. Step three is starting thyroid medications again. The thyroid hormone makes me a little more awake, but also feeling pretty sick. My mantra lately has been short-term pain for long-term gain. I needed to save my saliva glands with lemons. I needed to save my bowels by taking that medicine that makes me sick. And I needed to prevent dehydration to save my bladder. So I was drinking tons of water. And you know, this whole process with dieting and hospitalization and all that is to prevent future surgeries and prevent my cancer from spreading. Step five or something like that is 
getting out of nuclear isolation. Even though I was home from the hospital, I still had to stay in my room. But finally, finally, the pets could come in and they could cuddle with me. And um, you probably already know that I really love this cat. <laughs> Sadly, step two was taken back, which was the bowel movements. Uh, I did another scan of to see where the iodine was and um, they saw a lot in my bowels. So back on this uh, intense stomach medicine. But I am feeling a little better on this day. During quarantine, I was basically in bed all day, every day. I went outside, did some yard work today. That was nice. Um, interestingly enough, from the radiation, because it was in my saliva glands for so long, because, you know, it just w affected my mouth and taste buds, uh, I lost my sense of taste, which is kind of sad because I was so looking forward to eating food. That's expected to some extent. And finally, since, you know, I finished this iodine radiation and, you know, my blood problems are no longer here, uh, I lived with my family in Pennsylvania for the last 1.3 years. Eight people in one house in the mountains. Honestly, I really, really enjoyed it you know I love the pets I love the kids it was really really nice to have help and it's actually the longest I've lived in one house since 2013 but I never planned on working from home forever uh, or living with my family forever so now that we um, we think I'm pretty stable I'm off to my own place in Philadelphia with a new job and it's my ninth house in four years so hoping for the best mm -hmm.